Welcome. We are here today to demonstrate the installation of Agway's SnapLock SL steel roof system. Using a mock roof for demonstration purposes, this video will show the basic steps required in the preparation of the roof surface and the installation of Agway's SL roof system. Agway's SnapLock panel system offers variable panel widths, two rib heights, and easy installation making it an ideal choice for seasoned contractors or DIY installers. Using a locking seam and hold-down clips, our SL panels eliminate the need for a seamer, allowing for easy installation, making them a popular choice for residential, agricultural, or commercial projects. Our installer will provide a step-by-step -step demonstration on how to effectively install the SL panels and accompanying materials. Please keep in mind that this is a mock-up roof, which will obviously have some limitations and restrictions. This video will provide you with a quick overview of installation and assembly. Advantages of the SL Profile Offered in 24 or 22 gauge Available in variable widths of panels to suit the building design Available in two rib heights one inch or one and a half inch. Optional stiffening flutes. Optional expansion clips for long sheets. Full range of stock colors. Before starting the installation of the NS Profile, ensure that you are equipped with all the necessary protective gear. Installers should wear protective gloves and eye protection and must be properly tied off at all times. They should also wear rubber or soft-soled shoes for enhanced safety and to avoid potential damage to the SL roof panels during installation. The following is a checklist of all the necessary tools essential to the installation of the SL profile panel. When installing SL panels on a new roof, no preparation should be required save a visual inspection of the substrate for debris. When installing SL components directly over top of shingles on an existing roof, it is important to inspect the old roof to ensure that it is clean, level, and free of missing or damaged shingles and mold. Rectifying any of these problems prior to installation will ensure the integrity of your SL roof. The flatness of all roofs should be verified prior to installing any SL panels. SL panels should only be installed on flat, true surfaces to ensure that the completed metal roof is flat. The first step for installation of the SL steel roof system is to install the drip edge flashing at the bottom of the gable roof. After you have measured and cut the drip edge to its proper length, hold the drip edge tight against the fascia board and screw down each end. Complete the installation by adding a screw every 12 inches along the length of the drip edge. The next step in the roof installation is the application of the titanium PSU-30 underlayment. Place the underlayment onto the roof so that it is flush with the roof edge and overlaps the drip edge flashing. Adhere the upper corner of the underlayment to the roof, then unroll and cut to the desired length. Then remove the adhesive backing as you apply it to the substrate carefully smoothing it down evenly as you proceed. You may walk around on the underlayment to be sure its adhesive backing is sticking properly to the substrate. Repeat the process with each required underlayment sheet, ensuring that each overlaps on the line indicated on the sheet below and that the overlap strip backing is removed to complete the seal. The next step is to install the gable edge flashing at each end of the roof. 
place the gable on the roof square to the base and flush to the edge. Then slide the gable back 1 8 of an inch from the base. This is done to prevent the gable from pushing the panel down toward the drip edge once the sheet is locked into place. The installation is completed by driving in a screw at the bottom, then at the top, and then in the middle of the gable. Screws are then driven in approximately every 12 inches from the middle outward. This procedure is mirrored for the second gable edge flashing. Now that the drip edge, underlayment, and gable edge flashings have been installed, we can proceed to prepare the first SL roof panel for installation. First, we need to hem the panel. This is the procedure that creates a hem at one end of the panel so that it can lock to the drip edge at the bottom of the roof. To create the hem, first measure and mark three quarters of an inch on both sides of the panel at one end. Cut the ribs and flatten, trimming the base material at a slight angle to complete the hem tab. Use a bending bar or hemming tool to fold back the tab created to produce a hem that will be used to lock the panel onto the drip edge. Each panel can be cut, hemmed, and installed individually, or the panels can all be cut and hemmed at once prior to installing the first panel. We're now ready to install the first panel. It is worth noting that SL roofing panels need to be installed left to right or right to left. Additionally, it is important that the first panel is installed precisely and is square with the gable edge flashing. Otherwise, the balance of the panels will be skewed across the roof line. After locking the first panel under the gable edge flashing, and engaging the hemmed SL panel edge tight to the drip edge, install the provided hold down clips along the inside rib at 24 inch intervals, hooking the clip over the rib and tucking the rib side portion under the panel. Each clip is affixed to the roof with two screws. We're now ready to install the second SL panel. Angling the sheet up the roof line, Align the large rib of the second panel over the small rib of the first. Manually apply downward pressure on the overlapped ribs at the drip edge end of the sheet, locking them together. Grip the top of the sheet and pull upward, locking the sheet hem to the drip edge. To ensure that the two panels are effectively locked together, apply downward pressure on the overlying ribs, snapping them together and finishing the seal. This procedure should be started from the drip edge working up the sheet to ensure that the hem remains locked properly in place. Installation is completed by applying the clips on the second panel and screwing them properly into place. As with the first panel, the clips are spaced along the inside rib at 24 inch intervals with each clip affixed with two screws. We will now prepare to install the last panel on the roof. This will require modifications to the panel to accommodate the necessary spacing from the penultimate panel to the gable edge. On the roof, take a measurement from the rib to the gable edge at the eave and at the ridge. Taking the two measurements is important in case the gable edge is not square with the eaves. Transfer these measurements to the final panel less one eighth of an inch, so the final fit will not be tight. From this measurement, add one and a half inch to form the false rib and snap a chalk line where the cut will be made. Once the cut is complete, measure from the cut back one and a half inch and snap another chalk line and make a 90 degree bend. The panel is now prepared for installation. To install the modified final panel, tuck the false rib into the gable and overlap the ribs following the existing installation instructions for locking the sheets together. It is necessary to affix this panel to the roof by placing two screws into the top of the panel through the Z closure. With all the panels firmly in place, you are now ready to install the metal Z closure flashing.
The first step will be to measure and trim the Z closure to the length required. Next, set the closure in place and mark out where the ribs are. For this demonstration, the notched method will be used to cut out the spaces needed to allow the Z closure to overlay the roof panel ridges. Standard practice is to snap a chalk line half an inch less than the width of the ridge cap to ensure its overlap above the panel is adequate, while allowing for ventilation. For this demonstration, a 7 and 1 half inch ridge cap is used. Therefore, a mark is made 7 inches from the center of the ridge on both ends of the roof. The chalk line indicates where to place the bottom edge of the Z closure. Once all of the notches have been cut, butyl tape is applied to the bottom of the closure and it is placed into position. The next step is to drive three screws into the upper edge of each closure, ensuring that the screws pass through the butyl tape. The final step of the installation is the application of color matched NovaFlex sealant to the joints where the Z closure meets the roof ridge, creating a watertight seal. After measuring and cutting the ridge cap to length, lay it evenly over the roof length, ensuring that the peak of the ridge cap and roof align. Affix the ridge cap to the gable edge flashing at both sides of the roof with a single screw. Complete the installation by placing a screw into the ridge cap where it overlaps a panel rib across the length of the roof. As a word of caution, be sure the screws are not under torqued or over torqued. If you don't tighten the screws enough, the screw heads will stick up, allowing access for snow and water infiltration. Conversely, over torquing the screws could dent the trim, damage the rubber washers, or worst case scenario, snap the screw heads off. Once all the sequences are correctly followed, the results speak for themselves. A roof that is beautiful as well as enduring. Thanks to Joe Pike and Whitestone Incorporated Metal Roofing Specialists for executing the installation of the roof.